What is going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all, your favorite AMP IA and part 147 instructor back with another video. And in this video, since our semester just started, I am continuing the trend of things to expect from part 147 schools. This video specifically is four things that you can expect when you start going to class at a part 147 school for your AMP. So if that interests you, as always, stick around and I'll get into it. The first thing you need to expect is that the schedule at most part 147 schools is very accelerated and can be looked at as another full-time job. What I mean by that is in our program, our classes run from 7.30 in the morning to 11.30 in the morning, and then from noon till four in the afternoon. So overall from 7.30 in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday unless you are in night classes. If you are in night classes, it's from five in the afternoon until 10 o'clock at night, Monday through Thursday. So that means, if you were following along, that for the entire 14 weeks of the academic semester, 14 to 16 weeks, depending on um, what block you're in, you are going to be going to class from 7.30 to four o'clock every single day, Monday through Friday, which doesn't leave a lot of time for a job, a family, or anything else. And yes, it sucks, but that's the way the program has always been. If you get lucky, do it right out of high school, take some student loans, and get a part-time job. If you have already been working, you've already got kids, you've got a family, we've got plenty of students like that too, they either find a way to make it work or they will sometimes take night classes. But the thing to be prepared for night classes is, is that it's gonna take almost three years to finish our 16-month program. The second thing that you can expect going to a part 147 school is the sheer workload and the amount of knowledge and information that's going to be coming at you. You gotta understand, we've got, depending on where you go, some programs are very accelerated to 12 months and some programs are stretched out to like 19 months. It just depends on where you are. As I've always said on this channel, I don't name the 147 school that I teach at specifically because I am not an authorized representative of the school nor are my views and opinions approved by the school. Uh, but if you wanna know where I teach, I teach in San Antonio and I'm not at Hallmark University. As always, nothing against them, I just don't teach there. You should be able to find it. Anyways, I digress. The information is coming at you so quickly that there's a lot of things that you have to absorb through your FARS class, through your aviation science class. Through each class, there's a lot of information that you're bringing in trying to learn, while on top of that also studying to prepare for your general and airframe test or your general and power plant test, whatever it is you're going to do first. And this is often what I find happens with students, is they'll get through all of their airframe and they're, they're finally ready to go test, they haven't taken their general written yet because they waited at our school under the new ACS standards. You actually can go take your general written test after you finished the um, general portion of classes, besides the point though. So you've waited, you're in airframe, you finished airframe, all right, I'm gonna go take my A, but you haven't studied. And now you're trying to study, I just shook the table. Now you're trying to study for your A at the same time you're taking power plant classes and power plant usually starts with theory classes on turbine engines and recip engines, which is even more information coming in that you're trying to absorb at the same time you're trying to study for your test. So in my opinion, it is actually easier with all of this information coming in as, as fast as it is to study your generals and study your generals and study your generals. And when you finish your general block, take the general written test. And then same thing when you hit airframe, start studying airframe as hard as you can throughout the whole program. So as soon as you can take airframe, as soon as you have your certificate of completion from the school, you take that, you go take your airframe written test and you prep for your OMP. And that way you're not trying to cram all of your airframe studies into your power plant semester. Because what you'll find is when you get to the end of power plant, you're kind of behind the ball on your power plant knowledge and now you're having to work twice as hard to catch up. The third thing is going to be tools. Some programs may elect to have you buy your own tools and bring them. I don't know. Depending on where you are going, you should call them ahead of time and say, hey, I'm starting there, you know, this semester, next semester, whatever it is. Um, what is going to be provided? What tools should I probably buy? And there will be some things that you need to bring. Now, at the 147 school that I teach at, we have a lot of the tools for like your first semester, your safety wire pliers, duck bills, uh, diagonal cutters, those kinds of things. Caveat, I'm adding this post edit. When I said that we provide safety wire pliers, 
What I mean is those are our safety wire pliers. They belong to the school, but for your shop practices class and some of your other classes, you can borrow them, but we will get them back at the end of the class. So it is still something you're going to need to buy for yourself eventually. But once you get into airframe and into power plant, we require our students to bring their own tools. We don't have sets of hand tools for every student. So your pliers, your screwdrivers, your socket sets, your wrenches, needle nose pliers, not needle nose pliers, um, any other special tools like safety wire pliers, files, those kinds of things you are going to need to have. Now, other tools like drill motors, rivet guns, bucking bars, those are all provided in those classes. When you do sheet metal, we're gonna give you the special sheet metal tools. But what you will need is your basic hand tools, your wrench sets, your socket sets, your plier sets, your screwdrivers, a small tool bag to carry them all around in, and all of the good stuff. So don't overlook that. We also do not provide safety wire, safety wire, we also do not provide safety glasses or earplugs. So if those are something you want, you're gonna need to bring those as well. And fourth, I do think it's worth mentioning that no experience is not a bad thing. We have a lot of students come in straight out of high school or maybe even a little older who did something else in life or wanted to go a different path in life before attempting to become an aircraft mechanic. And they have zero mechanical experience, like to the point that they've never held a wrench. And I have a lot of people thinking, man, you know, should I, should I take like an introduction class? Should I take a shop class? Is there some way I can learn more about hand tools and whatnot before I start a program? And in my opinion, it's just not something you need to do. It's something you need to be honest about. You need to tell your instructors day one, hey man, I don't have any mechanical experience. I've never worked on anything. I wanna learn as much as I can. And we will still build you a foundation of understanding to make you as good of a mechanic as you can possibly be in the future. But that does kind of remind me of something. All we're doing for you is building a foundation. We are not teaching you how to be an aircraft mechanic. We are laying the groundwork that you will go out into your career and build on. We are giving you a broad overview, if you will, of how most of the aircraft and system works so that you can pass the oral and practical test, get out in the field, get a job, get trained, and start learning as much as you possibly can hands on. Not having any mechanical experience is not the end of the world. And having a whole bunch of mechanical experience does not guarantee that you're gonna be successful. It certainly helps, especially with identifying hand tools and hardware and knowing how to use things, but it's not as big of a benefit as you would probably expect. So there you go, everybody. I hope you found this information useful and maybe even a little bit entertaining. As always, don't forget to leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Join the Discord, follow me on Instagram. And as always, go build something and be easy.